Hi guys, I'm Gage. In this video, we're going to be going through exactly how to use the Seller API. And hopefully this is the first episode in a whole series where we're going to be building a whole website application using the Seller API. So first thing you'll need is an Amazon Seller Central account. I'm sure if you're watching the video, you probably already have one. If you don't, you can sign up. It takes about five minutes. You need to make sure to get the professional plan. So it runs £30 a month. Just get it. Once you do have one, in my case, I have a new account just for developing, but uh, you can use your old account. You'll want to scroll down to the bottom to apps and services and click develop apps. So if you don't have a developer account, it's going to ask you to sign up. So it will, it will say that you need to fill in this profile, which I'll show you here. Process is pretty simple. Uh, hopefully the editor can blur out my personal information here, but essentially just fill in your name, uh, your phone number, and this is the important part, what roles you want. So these are essentially permissions you get from Amazon. Now, any of the restricted ones, you see I don't have clicked here, uh, they are gonna require an additional explanation as to why you need access to those. So the process of getting accepted for any of the ones that are unrestricted is very simple, but if you wanna get access to the restricted ones, it's gonna be a lot harder. For your use case, you just wanna put exactly why you want it. You can just do school project or something like that. And you'll want to fill in yes, 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 yes to all of the questions. And then I just have not applicable for the bottom two. So yeah, nice and simple. It will probably take 24 hours for your account to be accepted into the developer program. But once that's done, you can click add new client app. Cool. So app name, let's call this uh, video series YouTube. API type, SP API, and we can choose sellers or vendors. For us, we're sellers. And now we can choose what permissions we want here. So let's do, uh, let's do these top four, why not? You can add and remove them as you please. And you'll wanna select no here. If you, for some reason, need PII, it's quite difficult to be accepted for that. So I wouldn't even bother. Now, once we've done that, it's gonna bring up some values for us. We have the app ID here. Editor, please blur my app ID for my other app. Uh, and we have our LWA credentials. So this is all we're gonna need to start our app. So now if we move into PyCharm, this is the uh, environment I'm using to code Python. So if you're a beginner, I'd probably say PyCharm is a good bet, but you can use whatever you want if you're more experienced. So the first thing we're gonna need is to import our modules. So we're gonna need the seller API modules here and probably time and probably requests. So what I'm doing here is I'm just importing essentially code bases that I can use and rely on. So if you need to install any of these, the command would just simply be something like Python seller Amazon API. So you can just type this in if you don't already have it installed and you can copy this command here paste in your command prompt or paste or you can just search it in PyCharm and it will install it for you and then you can have access to Amazon Seller API. So now we have these imported. Now we need CSV and JSON. Cool. So these are the modules we're going to rely on. Firstly, we need to set our credentials. So what these are is essentially think about it as a username and password for the Seller API. So let's set these up. We need a refresh token which we don't have yet, but I'll show you how to get it. We're gonna need a LWA app ID and an AWA client secret. And that's all we need. So before, as of the last two months, we'd actually need uh, five. We need two more things and they're very complicated to get. So I'm very glad they removed them. So for our AWA app ID, all we have to do is just grab it from here and just paste it. And then for our client secret, we have to go to LWA credentials view. It's gonna generate us a nice LWA secret. So this one's very important that it isn't shared with other people. So, uh, oh, sorry, the, the LWA app ID is actually the client identifier. Don't need the app ID anymore. So we'll paste that in. Now we go to the client secret. Brilliant. Now all we need is the refresh token and then we'll be all hooked up to the Amazon API. To get the refresh token, we need to authorize an account. So we just need to hit this down button, click authorize, and we need to authorize a Seller Central account to have 
uh, so our app can have access to the Seller Central account's data. When we head over to Authorize, what we want to do is if you want to authorize your own account, you can just hit Authorize App. For me, I need to authorize a different account because this account has no data on it. So I'm going to click Sign into that account. It's going to prompt me to log in. If you guys don't know what an API is, now is probably a good time to explain it while I'm logging in. So an API is just something that you can say, you can send a request, which is just some data, and the API will reply with more data. So if I say to Amazon, hi, can I have all the orders in the last 30 days? The API will respond with all of the orders in the last 30 days, as long as you make the correct request. Cool, so I'm all logged in. All I have to press is authorize, and then it's gonna give me a refresh token here. Cool, I can just copy that and paste it in the refresh token. Awesome. So what credentials is, this dict stands for dictionary and it just makes a dictionary with these values. So we have the refresh token, the app ID and the client secret. It's important that you have a comma after the strings, the speech marks, otherwise it won't work. Cool. So uh, now we have our credentials. What we need is to set a marketplace. So thanks to the seller Python API, we can just do marketplace equals marketplace.us for in my case, because I'm using a US account or if you're using UK, just put UK. Now let's start with making a function. If you guys notice the stuff getting filled, that's from something called GitHub Copilot that you pay $10 a month for, and it will just use AI to kind of guess what you're trying to code. Uh, and it's very, very useful. So we'll make a function called get orders because what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the last 30 days of orders. So first thing we need to do is declare what report we're gonna get, uh, which we just do report type dot, and then what report we want. So the way we figure out what report we want is we go to the developer seller partner API documents, and we can find something called reports. There is a lot of stuff here you can see why it is very complicated. Flat file orders by order date, seems like the one. Yes, cool, so we'll copy that value and then all we need to do is paste it here and now the, our report type is set. Uh, now we need to set up a report. Uh, my bad, this is reports. So we're using the reports from up here, from what we imported, and we're using the credentials along with our marketplace. Then we need to create the report. The AI has done very well. Uh, so what this is doing is it's using the reports that we just set up with the credentials in the marketplace. And then it's assigning the report type as the report type that we just got up here. And then our data start time. So this is the amount of orders we're gonna download. Well, the date in which the orders start from. So I've got the 29th of Jan here. Let's do 15th, we'll get the last two weeks. Now I'm going to sleep this and we'll see what happens when I call this function. So get orders, run this. And hopefully something prints out, brilliant, we've got it. So as you can see here, I've printed data, which is the create report uh, request I've just done. And it shows us the headers, uh, next token, pagination and the payload and the report ID. So this report ID is very important. The report ID is what we're gonna to use to actually download the report. Our rate limit here is how many of these reports you can download per minute, I think. Uh, so 0.016 is something like you can get one every 10 minutes or something. You, you have to do the math on that. Okay, so now what we need is the report ID for our next step. So the way we get that, uh, we'll call this report ID, is we just need the data and then the payload, which is here. And then the thing we're looking for within the payload is the report ID, which is just in squared brackets here. So now we have the report ID as that. Oh, I've lost our square bracket there. Cool. Now we need to get the report by using the report ID. So now we're getting the report. What we need is to wait for the report to be complete. So the way we can do that 
is get something that's called a processing status. So we're, we're getting the processing status, and if it's not done, fatal, or cancelled, it's going to wait two seconds and then re-get uh, the data from the report ID. But what I'll do as well is I will print the data dot payload here so we can see that process in action now if the if the payload is fatal or cancelled we're going to just print uh, report failed awesome all right let's see how this runs shall we okay so what we're doing now is this line will get the report id and now we are checking how the report we're trying to get the report and we can see down here that the report is still in queue because we're printing the processing status and when it's done uh, our program should stop and then we're going to try and do something with the data well wow, this one is taking a while you know for the process of demonstration i'm going to reduce the date here so we get uh, some faster reports okay while we're still in queue i'm going to just add some nice print statements getting orders so after that long wait, our report is now done, as you can see here. So now let's try and do something with that report. So what we need to do is get the report data. And we're going to get that by doing a request. So res dot get report document with the report ID that we just got from the data payload. So now we have that report data. We need to get the URL from the report data. Now we have the report URL and then we need to request the report URL. So this seems like a lot of steps. If Amazon wanted to make it easy, they would just give us the URL to start with so we didn't have to fiddle around with the document IDs and stuff like that. But uh, no, they like to make it difficult. So now we have all of the data in the report URL here. So if I print off the report URL, today is the 31st, so I'm just gonna do yesterday's. I can show you what data our code is actually getting here. Now, this might seem honestly really complex, and now I'm doing it, seems extremely complex, but uh, I would urge you, if you're still watching, uh, to kind of stick with this because the stuff I'm going to be doing next with actually manipulating the data is going to be more logical than this. The way APIs kind of work is you have to be familiar with the documentation, and this is the documentation. It's like a million pages long. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're really interested in finding out more, you can read this. Otherwise, just kind of go along with what I'm doing. So we've printed out the report URL here. I'm going to click it. Report can only be requested only up to 30 days. Did I? Oh, I've done 2021 like an absolute idiot. We will make this 2024. So the idea for this series is I, I really want to make show you how to make an app using the Amazon Seller API. So just a, like a website where you can check your orders or your inventory. Uh, we're want to manipulate the data a little bit so if you guys have any idea of what you want to see by the end of this project just leave a comment and i will actually read them and, and potentially that's where we can take the videos so if you're interested in checking your sales and roi we can do that we can do anything so uh, this is the file i'm essentially downloading from amazon it's got my this is the whole page is gonna have to be blurred <laughs> uh, it's got our order ids it's got how much we paid for the items well, how much uh, the customer paid for the items, we've got the SKUs, everything you could possibly want. So now what we need is we need to find exactly what data we're retrieving from Amazon. So we can just copy our file and we can find something called a uh, our report type and we can find something called attributes. So we can click that and it will show you what exactly we're downloading here. So the order ID, purchase date, order status, all of this we're downloading. Obviously, not all of it is what we want. So we need to decide what we want now. So we're going to decode our content here uh, into Latin ones. So it's just in case your titles 
ha or skews have any weird characters in it, what this is going to do is just uh, get rid of them, essentially, so we can save them into a file, just in case there are any issues with that. Now we need to set up a read value. So what this is, it's going to split the lines which are in decoded content, and it's going to use a deliminator called slash t. So what this is, is, is tab deliminators. So there's four tabs in a space. And what the reader is going to allow us to do is actually iterate through that list. So if you think of the reader as a long list filled with all of the data we just downloaded, we're going to be looking at each individual element of the list. Okay. So now we need to iterate the reader list for row in reader and then set up our JSON data variable here. And we need to do skew. First thing we're gonna get is the skew. So we can find that by just doing row skew. And we know there's a row called skew because it's found in the attributes file here. Then let's do the price. That's saved as item price, I think, here. We're gonna need the currency as well. So let's do currency. The reason we need the currency is if we make any sales in foreign marketplaces, we want to know that. So potentially we can do the conversion. Uh, we're going to need the quantity, uh, the order status, just in case it's cancelled. We probably also want the title. Uh, and that's called product name, hopefully. Cool. So now we've set up this. We need to stick a comma here. And instead of a equal sign, we need a colon. And these need to be in speech marks. Cool. All right, so now we've uh, iterated through this. We need to append the data to our list that we just set up. And it's important that our uh, data list, the appending, is happening within the for loop. So it shouldn't be here, which would happen at the end of the for loop. It should be here happening within the for loop. And then now let's save this data to a file. So we can have f is equal to open just something called orders.json. We will dump the JSON into this file and we'll just close the file. All right. And then let's print um, orders saved. All right, let's run it. Let's see if it works. Fingers crossed. So we're getting the orders. Now we should be entering the queue. Now it's in progress. So we're about here. Then hopefully we should get done. Move down here, get the URL. Cool. Now we've got the URL, we're requesting it, and it's saved the orders. So hopefully when I click on this file, yes, all of our sales are saved here, all of our orders. So we've got all of the information we want, uh, our SKUs, our price, our currency, our quantity, and our order status, and our title. This is going to be really useful when working out our profit and ROI from this. So that's what we're going to be going through in the next episode, unless someone gives me a better suggestion. Uh, so that's all. If you guys have any questions, please ask me in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter. I'd love to see you guys give this a go. And in the next one, we're going to be manipulating this data that we've just downloaded.